The woman spoke. What do you have to say about sexuality and gender? The tender responded. There are two sexes, the male and the female. A male is an adult human, and a woman is an adult female. A boy becomes a man when he may sexually procreate the species. A girl becomes a woman when she may sexually procreate the species. Men behaving as boys and women behaving as girls is evidence of stunted psychological development. There is no necessary difference in the expression of the male and the female. Each faces the same environment with the tools available to them. Each has faculties of reason and imagination. Each has emotional response mechanisms to assist in their survival. The same threats threaten each. The wolf must cause the alert in either. There is no basis for women to like flowers more than men. Both should appreciate the beauty of flowers, but neither should fixate. Neither should become distracted in adornment. Either can have long hair or short hair, but where long it should be bound, for all should expect to run and to ride within the grasping forest. And so the gender roles are fundamentally incoherent. They are cultural expressions. Fundamentally, the more they diverge, the more incoherent the difference is. But there may be reason for their divergence, the result of a division of labor, a division of representation, the refined warrior male and the refined lady female. But even then, the female must not be ridiculous. She must be stern. Her solemn duty is to manage the household. She watches the back of her man, and he feeds and protects all that she builds. Even she should be able to jump the horse. That is a system of gender roles that had evolved and that had lasted, that secured the evolution of human development until the late industrial age. Never was there a time when the effeminate male or the affected masculine female was not an affront to the counterpart portrayed. The true warrior's pride is not an affectation. It is the direct representation of what he is. It is the expression of his actual, not pretended, strength. And the effeminate male, lisping and prancing and waving handkerchiefs about, was never anything other than an insult to what women actually may be. Now there are men that behave, not even like a distorted idea of women, but like a distorted idea of girls. And those men, clearly suffering from serious mental disorders, are encouraged and held forth in the society as heroines of the species, as positive archetypes. And meanwhile, women, in their insane obsession with equality and inclusion, allow men to compete against them in their own sports, so long as the men are wearing women's clothes and swear they are in fact a woman in their male body. It is a disgrace. It is embarrassing. The promotion of it is the corrosion of the memory of all that struggled before. Furthermore, the presence of the issue itself is sick, in that it is manifesting precisely when humanity is faced with its biggest challenge, how to rein itself in so that the best of life as we have known it doesn't become impossible.